This is part two of the research process. My name is Rhonda Kitchens and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in terms of actual research. So while I usually don't start a page that has a little image on it or things like this, I do have when I'm working on research at least a keyword section. And then I start breaking this keyword section into search strategies. But first of all, it's just a list of words and ideas. And I kind of have my topics and then my topic may change or I may throw some things up there as I go through the process. And yes, on the bottom, when I determine which research sources I use over others, I will actually use things more or less like uh, crap, sift, and um, critical thinking basics right here. So let's go to the library and let me show you how to get into ProQuest. From the library, you're going into databases A to Z. I want you to go to ProQuest, it's under P, but here you'll see Academic Search Premier. That's a general database. When you see broad cross-disciplinary coverage, I'm saying, hey, search this and you'll get a lot of different ideas and you'll probably get the answer to what you're working on. Also, Opposing Viewpoints is under O, but I'm going to P for ProQuest. ProQuest is one of the bigger databases in terms it covers everything from astronomy to zoology. Again, that's really important when you're starting out on your work. And when I have a choice, I'm going to search an advanced search over a basic when it's made available to me. And this is what it looks like. And I'm working on, I'm going to go high school. I'm putting high school in quotes because it searches uh, as a phrase, not individually. I'm going to put sports but it might be sport. I'm going to put an asterisk. An asterisk is a truncation mark. So I get sport, sports, and sporting. And I'm using and or, or not are my options. And to make sure I get, like if we have a Zen diagram, we'll have high school, we'll have sport, and I'll get the search right in the middle of those two things. I'm going to add another row of and because I'm and, and I'm worried about COVID-19 is my other piece. I would like to, uh, you can search just full text and peer reviewed, but I'm still in my research process when I'm just kind of making sure going through some titles and a little bit of uh, explanations to make sure there's going to be enough research for what I'm working on and if uh, pick up some other keywords and sort of look at what I'm doing um, because I don't need 65,000 pieces. So this is a prediction about how it's going to change. I was talking about perseverance at this certain place, uh, cancel disruptions, um, this might talk about something I would find very interesting. I'm trying to, so the first thing I'll look at, should I put some other things in my search, uh, keywords and I don't feel that I should. So I'm going to go through, um, I see people being in limbo. Limbo might be a word. I don't think so. This talks about people actually getting tested positive. That's really not what I'm looking at. Can sports get back on the playing field? That's absolutely what I want to look at. It's in a train trade journal is education week. Oh, that's about high school. That's totally what I want to look at. I'm going to look at this now. Um, just to see, I see it is full text and I'm going to go through it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to see if there's other words I want to use. And some of the things I'm going to look at here are the suggestions that ProQuest has. And I'm also going to down, go down here to the subjects and see if I want to take any of these. I didn't know that coronavirus could be used as a plural, so I'm going to change that in my search strategy. High school sports, I might use in a quotation. This has locations, and this has some different things. It talks about an activities association. Now, when I see things like this, I put those into my research. I might want to go to see what they're saying. I just don't want to read what people say that they said, I want to go in to see what they said. If you remember when we were looking at the valuation, SIFT was talking about tracing your resources. This is how you would do that. So by finding this one particular article, I'm covering a lot of the research process. I'm finding people and ideas. I have here the National Federation of State and High School Associations that also has some guidelines on things about student sports. I want to go in there and also see something further. Uh, someone named Bobby Cox and India High School, Indiana High School Athletic Association. I want to go in and also search these. I will make these part of my searches. So I'm just going to copy one to show you what that might look like. So I'd copy it and I would go to my test piece and I would go here and I would 
quick paste the formatting. So there you go. And I would keep adding to this and then go back in and change it. So I hope you could see what I did there. So I'm going to go back up here to ProQuest and I'm going to go out. I'm probably going to make sure that I use that because that covers a lot of what I uh, want to look at. And it looks like it represents a variety of points of views from different people and different associations. I'll also go and look at those associations. It mentions names of coaches. I might see what else they've said in reference to that particular topic. So you could see right in that one spot, I sort of did a lot of the whole research process, if you know what I mean. So um, right now I'm even thinking my topic may be, may be the role of amateur or high school athletic associations in times of pandemic and making the best choices for athletes. Do you see how that might change? And that might be a meteor a heavier and more interesting topic about seeing how these groups do this. Um, this is talking about professional sports. It's shaking up students and talks about Colorado outbreaks. And those aren't really working for me. So do you know what I could do when I go up here and do this search? We have, when you use and, it means it uses uh, you're uh, finding the overlap between ideas. When you use or, it's like trying to make sure you have all the synonyms. So you could do something like COVID-19 or coronavirus, and that totally makes sense. I don't want to see outbreaks. I don't know of another way of saying it right now, but I want to see if I can get rid of some of these. So I'll put not outbreaks. And actually it got rid of 10,000 pieces. Okay. And then we see not quarantine. I could go not quarantine. So I could keep taking out pieces that weren't there. So let's kind of go back to my piece here. So you can see how I'm using just the search results here to look at my piece, add new words, and kind of rethink what I'm working on. So when I go here, let's look at this research process. Yes, I'm working on selecting, narrowing, and revising my topic through my research. I'm choosing resources. I already found one um, article using ProQuest. And what I identified was I wanted to use ProQuest, academic search complete, and opposing viewpoints as my very general places to go. I also identified that I might want to use Google Scholar or Google Advanced, and I'll show those. So, so far, I'm checkmarked there. I'm brainstorming keywords. I'm coming up with different ways of looking for keywords and trying to find some of the associations and places that have to do with my topic. Um, part of my revised rework was I'm thinking, you know, maybe the larger topic is the uh, sports associations interactions with uh, high school sports and some of the uh, things that they're doing. And um, these are like larger associations. They're not down in the neighborhood, like with the regular people seeing what's going on. And I might have something to say about that. Like, why is this slightly faceless group up here talking and addressing how things are being handled on the ground and um, the role of coaches and whatnot, which in a way kind of blows up my topic, but also gives me a way to start bringing it back down. This process isn't me failing to do research. This is me actually doing the research process. And I want you to be able to feel how you kind of go back, forward, let me look at my keywords, let me look at my sources. Maybe I'll do better if I use this over the other. And in my evaluation of sources, at least in one spot, I did address that something was an education week, which is a well-known and a well referred trade journal. And I could also do a Google research on that to find that to be true about bias or anything else. So I hope that makes sense to you. And then I would go through academic search complete and probably opposing viewpoints and build this in more. Meantime, remember when I was talking about uh, search strategy? One of them was truncation. Remember I found that coronavirus is sometimes coronaviruses. Instead of searching for it individually, when I put this here, it searches for coronavirus, coronaviruses. Here, and I want to make sure that it searches it together. I'm going to put this in quotes. That makes sure that it, these search together. Quotes. Also, one of my other favorite things, um, of course, is truncation. You can use it like this. Do you see how I want to search athletics and athletes? If I take this back to here and I add this, this will search athletes and athletics all in one search. And that is a really great thing because you don't have to keep doing the same thing over and over again. And if you have this list, 
You can just keep copy and pasting these ideas with ands or nots, ors, whatever is specific, because here we could do or, we'll capitalize it, so or COVID-19. Sorry, I'm doing this raw, so I'm typing. And that would be it. And uh, athletes, I can't think of another word, aspirations. And maybe I, this, I don't think would work, but it could. Goals, pro or professional. And athletes, if I want to do that, and COVID and pandemic, we could do lockdown. And those things will look for different aspects and build them together and help me improve my search or decide I want to drop something off. We are at 10 minutes here, but I want to show you two things. And it's specifically about Google. I'm going in databases A to Z. I'm clicking Google. I'm not going. Here I have set, set this up. So you could find full text, have your, you a little video if you forget this whole thing. Now, Google Scholar here is set up with our institution code. So if I look at sports and it almost filled it in for me. If you see, if you click on this, it'll take you to the paywall and it'll want money. Here, it should take you to the databases. All these things on the right hand side should be available to you in full text. So now you understand that it's useful. Now this is talking about impacts and coping strategies, which even this, which would also be like sort of a general overview of the pro problems with COVID-19 and working and getting things done and coping. This might be a great piece for you, even though it may not have the individual pioneer spots. And it's a scholarly article it was written in 2021. It's been cited four times since it was uh, just published in uh, 2021. That's pretty good. But do be aware with the citation. Sometimes when somebody says something wrong, they're cited many times to disprove them or mock them or in other ways say that they had to pull this article or whatever. So that's always something to pay attention to. So if you go over here, these are also full text. So if you find one good article, you can find other ones that are good as well. You can also restrict the time period and do custom ranges and things of that nature. So if you use this, you'll be able to find all sorts of wonderful things. So if your rubric or assignment called for a scholarly article, that might be a great way to do it. Also, let's go over to just plain Google. There was a time that this was below Google and it may return and sometimes you can find up just below the search bar. So I'll just put in Google and I'm going to have to go to a search here, advanced search. Obviously I've done this a few times. If you do tools, suppose you're already in a search and you click on tools, settings, it has advanced search underneath here that you can get to immediately. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to show you why it's more important. Um, when I'm doing my searches, they're kind of locked into me looking for shoes or whatever else I'm working on at the time. But suppose here I'm working on COVID and sports. This asks me to only search with the important words. So in a way, this trains you how to be a great researcher. Uh, type the important words. Put exact words in quotes. Remember high school? I might put that in there. So I'll put it in high school. I would not fill in every one of these lines because the more you fill in, the less you get. Um, this also type between um, or between the words you want. So remember when I was saying um, Corona or coronavirus, I'll just put this, this may kill the search. Uh, none of these words, I didn't want outbreaks or things like this. Numbers, if there's a number in it, language, region. If you want to restrict it to a specific place or do a comparison, that's good. If you want to only look in government sites, education sites or organization sites, this is great. If you just want to see if you say, hey, I want to know what the CDC or the Departments of Health across America say about this topic, I'm going to put that in. I'm going to just try it. I'm not sure how well that's going to work. And it gives you other things to look at as well. If you have time, you've never looked at Google Advanced. If you go through the section over here, it's going to fundamentally change your ability to do research and look at it in different ways. It's one of my favorite things. Do you notice immediately that you don't have ads and things at the top? So you're going to have um, something that's breaking through your search barrier that's on here. I'm going to have something about sports safety guidance from Illinois, the CDCs, talking about operational strategy, et cetera, CDC, uh, the National Library of Medicine, 
I have something from Connecticut. So you can see by doing just something like that, I've gotten to things that I normally would not have gotten through the Google search. And then let me lay this on to you as my goodbye. Most people never get past the first page of a Google search. And that is not research. Just to let you know, that is not research. That is um, settling for, you know, it's just not a, a good research practice is where I'll go. Anyway, my name is Rhonda Kitchens. I've showed you ProQuest. I've showed you Google Advance and Google Scholar and some different ideas on um, creating search strategies using truncation, Boolean um, logic with and, or, or not, and also phrase searching with quotations. If you have any questions, or you want more information on this, always, always ask your librarian and I would be joyed. Very happy to talk to you. Have a great day.